Joining us right now for this latest black eye for X is Eric Desenhall. He's the chairman of Desenhall Resources. And, uh, okay, you're a crisis management guru. What do you do, Eric? Well, you first have to diagnose what it is that's happening here. And number one, you have the first variable is you have a Jewish community in America that believes it is in physical peril for the first time since World War II. Number two, you have extensive documentation. You can go on Instagram or TikTok right now and see people boldly making anti-Semitic statements uh, without fear of sanction. These things are being merchandised into universities and into companies and being and asking these institutions, why aren't you doing anything? This is a tough thing to respond to. And number three is I think there is this ongoing career death watch for Elon Musk. Has he finally gone too far? And the answer for 52 years has been no. There has not been any, any sanction. So in terms of your question, what to do is number one is a gut check. Does Elon Musk personally feel the way I'm sure a lot of his executives do, that there is danger here. There is danger to X, there is danger to Tesla, there is danger to SpaceX. His reaction may very well be, this is more of the same. And if that's the case, he will continue. If, they, if he personally does feel peril, he will have to face what every other company faces, which is the issue of, do you apologize? When do you apologize? When do you uh, establish uh, rules and policies to prevent this sort of thing. But there's no sign, really, that that's where they are yet. Well, it's interesting that the response comes from L Linda Yaccarino, the CEO, when the ire has been directed towards Elon Musk. I mean, maybe that's your answer right there. For now, the answers will come from the CEO. Well, I think that that's right. I mean, one of the problems working with a client like Elon Musk, and to be clear, he is not my client, is you are dealing with people whose life experience is different than the 7 billion rest of us. Their life experience is when everybody says you're wrong and you're out of your mind, is they are consistently right. What goes up continues to go up. How do you advise somebody like this? It's very difficult. So what you have is the per people around that person trying to dive in front of the bullets to take it which we don't know whether that will work just yet. It's worked for 52 years, uh, which is uh, Musk's lifespan. We'll see what happens now. But I don't think that this issue is going away soon. Okay, so what do advertisers do in this environment? We've seen the steps that IBM has taken. What about other advertisers? Because they've been caught in a little bit of a back and forth, too. When they have pulled ads in the past, Elon Musk has kind of gone after them for, for what they've done. Well, I, I have been spending a lot of time uh, on calls dealing with these issues with corporations and universities. And the answer about what they do is different. Uh, if you have a lot of business in the Middle East, you are seeing a lot of hemming and hawing. You are a lot, uh, seeing a lot of, there's a lot of both sides. There's two sides to every story. And of course, there is two sides to every story. It's just that there's more two sides to every story when the issue of Israel and American Jews are involved. You don't see this happening on race issues and gender issues that there are two sides. But I am also seeing uh, companies doing things like a lot of internal communications, uh, town halls where they discuss these issues. Other people are not saying anything and quietly directing their people to pull ads, but not announcing they are doing so. And, and by the way, it often works. Quietly doing things to avoid provocation often works better than announcing this wonderful deed you have done to cope with something. Uh, although, look, you said companies that have a lot of business in the Middle East. I would say companies here in the United States have a lot of pressure on them, too. It, it, it's been a little surprising to see how much of a of an angry issue this has become here, uh, seeing some of well, the protests it, it, and seeing some of the remarks that have been put up um, speaking out uh, against October, well, uh, uh, speaking out in favor of some of these attacks that were taken on to October 7. That's well, been, that's I, been I a think, shock. I think that, that it is shocking. And I'm, I was simply giving you the kind of variables that are addressed. I mean, one of the things that I see is that companies feeling if they put out a message that both angers Jewish people and Muslims, that is a success. Uh, when they put out 
statements or take an action that offends one over the other, that is a failure. So you are seeing a lot of this both sidesism. And it's been very interesting to see. I mean, look, I, I have seen this over a four decade career. Why is it that when someone makes a vaguely insensitive racial or gender oriented comment, severs or uh, ties are severed? But when you're dealing with Jewish issues, uh, there is a sense that because Jews are uh, not a minority, they are an elite, that you can push it a little bit more. But what is making this different is you are now seeing more. people um, taking in uh, Instagram posts and Facebook posts, posts into companies and saying, why did you respond this way on a race issue, on a gender issue, on an LGBT issue? Why are you not responding to this? And it is putting companies in a very tough position, and they are beginning to respond because they cannot answer that question successfully. Responding more forcefully. Eric, the whole, yes. the whole idea of safe spaces and microaggression, I, I can go back over the past five years and show you some of the most absurd things that supposedly were offensive. And the lowest common denominator was always... People were afraid to, to, to not honor someone's safe space about the most ludicrous not things. On this. <laughs> on this, it's like, it's not just a, a little bit. You say a, they get a little more leeway. This is it's like going from a BB gun to, to an atomic bomb. And, and but, why? Why is it like that? How, what, 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 do you have I an think explanation? It's the difference. Well, look, I mean, one of the things I often write about is there are, uh, in, in any controversy, you have villains, victims, and vindicators. And right now you are seeing a binary construct where there are only villains and victims. There are only oppressors and oppressees. Right. If you have someone who is perceived to be the oppressor, there is nothing bad you can possibly do to them because the perception is they can take it or they deserve it. Uh, this is why companies are responding and people are responding. How, how many people do you think would be comfortable uh, being filmed, making racist statements, That's making I mean. comments about women? I don't right. think that they would be willing to be filmed Eric, on this. They way. are.